you can easily and precisely align your maps in Albe Rodeo. Here's how. We'll show you how to follow the three-step process and correct a distorted map. Before you start, you'll need to open a room in your Albe Rodeo account. And you'll need to have a gridded map image to upload. Albe Rodeo supports adding multiple maps to a scene so it's important to ensure that all of those images are scaled and positioned to match the scene's grid lines. As a result of this universal alignment, each map will naturally be aligned in any scene where it's placed and will be at the same scale as other maps that are used there. First, let's follow the three-step process. We're currently looking at the scene importer where we're about to import a map image and make a scene from it. However, this map doesn't have any scaling clues in its file name, like 150 dpi or 30 by 18, so Alpe Rodeo hasn't been able to auto-align it to the scene's grid. In cases like these, you can select the Transform tool at the foot of the image preview in order to use the alignment rulers, which allow you to adjust the map's size and position precisely with a three-step process. Step 1. Aligning a grid cell on your map to the corner of the rulers. Step 2. Roughly scaling the map image so the map's immediate grid aligns with the four marks on the ruler. Step 3. Using the precision rails to fine-tune the alignment across the whole of the map's width and height for a perfect match. These alignment controls are available in all the places where you can manage your image assets, which include the scene importer, the asset manager, and even the align image function for a map that's already been placed within a scene. Let's look at these three steps in action as we create this new scene, noting that while using the alignment rulers, the scene grid lines have become a high contrast orange colour. Firstly, go to the top left corner of the map image where the alignment rulers begin, and drag the thick offset sections of the rulers individually, so that the top left of a grid cell in your map becomes aligned with the ruler's origin. Sometimes the first clear grid lines on the map are well inside the edges of that image. If you need more precision, then feel free to zoom in, or you can hold the control or command key to slow the movement down. Secondly, use the coarse scaling handles to get the map's grid to match the four marks on the thick section of the ruler. Note that when scaling the map image, the X and Y axes are coupled together by default for your convenience. You can also pan around to see how good this alignment is in other parts of the map, and if you're happy with it, then you can finish here. In fact, many VTTs will only allow this level of precision. However, if you pan the viewport to the very edge of the map, you'll see that what seemed like a good alignment has slowly drifted, because a very small error has accumulated with every grid cell and has become quite noticeable. Thirdly, to fix the drift that's accumulated across the map, we'll use the precision rails that extend to the vertical and horizontal edges of the image. Usually it's best practice to align the longest dimension first, knowing that the shortest dimension will be less demanding. After a quick check of a few places across the map, we can see the map image now has excellent alignment to the scene's grid. As well as being aligned in this new scene, we can be confident that this map will be properly aligned in any other scene where you want to reuse it, and will also match the scale of other maps added there too. Lastly, let's correct a distorted map. Sometimes you'll follow the three-step alignment process and still find some drift in one axis when the other axis is perfect. This is because the map is distorted and doesn't have geometrically regular grid lines. However, we can use the precision rails to fix this, but by applying scaling to the drifting axis alone. For example, in this hex gridded map showing overland travel, I'll follow the three-step process initially and we'll see how close we can get. Step 1. Align one grid cell to the corner of the rulers. Step 2. Adjust the coarse scaling of the map so it's very close to the scene's grid lines. Step 3. Use the precision rails to get really good alignment with the scene's grid. OK, so I can get the vertical alignment to be great, but the horizontal alignment shows increasing amounts of drift as we look across the map. For hexagonal and isometric maps, this is usually due to their geometry. Only one dimension of those grid cells can be an integer number of pixels, so the other dimension doesn't neatly fit into the pixel values used in an image. 
It's common to find hex and ISO grids online with drift that accumulates the further away you are from the top left corner of the image. This drift is baked into the image of the map itself, so you will need to account for it when aligning to the scene's grid. As mentioned previously, the scaling of the two axes is normally coupled together, but we can decouple them temporarily by holding the Shift key. If you're on a touchscreen device without a keyboard, you can touch the padlock icon to toggle the unlocking of the image's proportions. Either of these decoupling methods allows us to scale only the horizontal axis in this case, as you can see me doing now. As a result, our vertical alignment will remain unchanged and we'll only be adjusting the horizontal alignment to correct the distortion in the image. After a quick check at the bottom left corner of the map, you can see that the vertical alignment has been unaffected. So now the entire map is properly aligned to the scene's grid, which we can confirm in the bottom right of the map furthest away from the alignment ruler's origin. And that's all there is to it. This ability to adjust a map's offset and scaling per axis is very powerful for correcting image distortion and recovering universal alignment, which also ensures that the grid snapping and measurement tools are a delight to use. Our next video will show how to use multiple maps to create a multi-level scene. To learn more about Albert Rodeo, subscribe on YouTube or click on another video to keep watching.